YGO Strat single card discussions are going to be talking about some of the cards that have impacted Yu-Gi-Oh throughout the years. Today's card, further proof that all of Kaiba's cards are better than Yu-Gi's, Card of Demise. Card of Demise was first released in the Millennium Pack in 2016, with two reprints to date, once in Legendary Collection Kaiba in 2018 and in Dual Power in 2019. For time on the ban list, it was first limited on the January 2020 ban list, where as of this video, it has stayed ever since. A normal spell card, its effect reads. Draw until you have three cards in your hand. Also, for the rest of this turn after this card resolves, your opponent takes no damage. During the end phase of this turn, send your entire hand to the graveyard. You can only activate one card of demise per turn. You cannot special summon during the turn you activate this card. Card of Demise is one of my favorite types of cards that Konami designs, one that has severe negative effects built in to balance it, but its effects are so damn strong they don't matter. You can't special summon the turn you use it at all, so it kills any use in a pure combo deck. You have to send your entire hand to the graveyard during the end phase of the turn you use it, meaning not only do you not get any sort of discard effects, but you also don't want to play any sort of hand traps in a deck that would play it. And once you've used it, you can't deal any damage to the opponent by either battle or effect, which helps to keep this card out of most FTK decks since there's no sense in getting to the FTK if you can't do the K part of the FTK. And that doesn't even mention that the card isn't actually a guaranteed draw three, it just draws until you have three. So if you activate it with two other cards in hand, you've essentially just used the world's most restrictive upstart goblin in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. But still, the card is limited for a reason. I've said it in far too many videos at this point, but card advantage is king in Yu-Gi-Oh. And when this card is played right, it's a plus two. Too. Immediately, this card lends itself to back row decks. Any decks that like to play floodgates and trap cards in general can find room for this without much trouble. But Yu-Gi-Oh is best when there are monsters on the board, and this card really shines in decks that played powerful monsters. And there are few monsters as powerful as Masterpiece. In a horrible, horrible turn of events, True Draco, a meta contender by itself, found that it could play this card without issue. The deck's built-in tribute summoning made the special summon lock irrelevant, and it main decks not only in archetype continuous traps, but floodgates in general that were easy to set, making the hand discarding at the end of the turn irrelevant as well. That's not to mention that even if it had to discard cards, it could discard continuous spells or traps since they synergized so well with Masterpiece, and the general abuse the deck put people through with cards like Dynamite and Ignister Heat making for free access to your cards for the opponent playing the game, it, it was a brutal deck, and Demise only helped to make it even more consistent. I remember actually showing one of my friends Lithium 2300's True Draco vs Towers Turbo video back in like 2017, and he thought it was so stupid he quit the game for two years. And seeing as doing that meant he skipped out on the entirety of 2018, I would actually tell you he probably made the right choice. But for all I'm hyping this up, it wasn't the best deck of its time, and it's not the only deck to have ever used it. Paleo Frog would play it, since the deck already plays more traps than anything else, and even sending cards to the grave at the end of the turn wasn't a problem, as getting rid of a frog could just be more fuel for Ronin Toten, or it could just be getting Paleos into your graveyard to go off on the following turn. Yosenju is actually the first deck I remember being talked about playing it, since it's yet another control deck, and since the getting rid of your hand effect and Yosenju bounces both occur in the end phase, the player could choose to resolve Demise before resolving their Yosenjus, meaning you could get rid of your hand and then put the Osenjus back. And lastly, the deck I'll mention to play it is Sky Striker, and arguably the deck that got it limited? Arguably. The card was never the definitive variant of the deck. As mentioned earlier, it was either Demise or Hand Traps, and Hand Traps were pretty big throughout 2018 and 2019. But the only monster that it needed to play was Ray. so between the canonically 13-year-old girl and all of the native spells, Demise could be an easy fit for Striker decks, and some builds running it began to see success at events. That is, until its limit in 2020, after which the card disappeared from just about every list bar the odd Paleo Frog and probably Yosenju lists as well. I'm not going to pretend I look at them very often. 
or at all. If it isn't clear from the decks I've mentioned and the abundance of restrictions on it, the card is best in control decks and really great in a few choice ones that pair fantastically with it, namely True Draco and Yosenju. It's one that I think should definitely stay at its limited slot, if not just banning it outright, as bringing it back means True Draco can go plus two for free, and I personally am very biased against that. But seriously, the card allows for a very serious advantage gain to the player who can use it all by itself and that can lead to very one-sided duels in favor of the player who can resolve it, and this game feels best when you don't need Ash Blossom to stand a chance against the opponent, and Demise is one of the cards that, at very least, makes it feel like you need the Ash for it just to stand a chance. Overall, Demise is an incredibly powerful draw spell, one that swings the tide of duels by itself, and as long as control decks can be viable in this game, we'll always be able to find a home in them, and if ever unlimited, it could easily find its way back into meta contention. I'm just gonna clown here at the end, because uh, Kaiba and Yugi both had broken ass draw spells. This one was Kaiba's and Card of Sanctity for Yugi. This card is limited and Card of Sanctity is so unplayable in the TCG that its highlight over the last 17 years since its release was as a Nebra Disc meme when Nebra Disc got imported to the TCG in like 2015. God, I love this meme. And so that's our look at Single Card Discussions Card of Demise. Stay tuned for our next video and feel free to suggest some cards to review or what type of video you you'd like to see. Don't forget to like and as always subscribe to YGO Strats so you too can become a true duelist.